As you probably know by now, there are big changes happening with SOA written exams starting fall 2020. My name is Eddie Smith. I'm an instructor with the Infinite Actuary, and I also manage really all of our fellowship products. And in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of really the key changes that are happening so that you're aware. Of course, this is a big deal because really since the beginning of time, written actuarial exams have been given on pen and paper. In fact, the earliest actuarial exams have been found on cave drawings way back in the... No, I'm just kidding. Actuarial exams don't go back quite that far, but they certainly go way back into the 20th century. And every year, people sit down with pen and paper and take their upper level written actuarial exams to complete their fellowship requirements. And beginning in fall 2020, pen and paper are gone and they're being replaced essentially with Word and Excel. So this is a big deal. This is a very big change. And let's talk about the biggest changes at a glance. So of course, just like I said, before CBT, exams were given on paper. Okay, you could use a pen or a pencil. Of course, you had an SOA approved calculator. Starting in fall 2020 and beyond, the whole process will be fully electronic. All of your answers will be typed into either a Word file or an Excel file. You'll be sitting at a computer station in a Prometric Center. That's another big change because for years and years and years, people took their exams typically at insurance companies, but also other sites set up in advance by the SOA. They were proctored by at least one person locally. Sometimes you're just sitting in a boardroom at a company, maybe by yourself. Maybe there's three other people there. Maybe you're at a bigger company and more of an auditorium. But going forward, everything is going to be administered through Prometric. And if you've taken prelim exams in recent years, you're, of course, familiar with Prometric because that's the same company that the SOA uses to administer their computer-based preliminary exams. Now, nothing is changing in terms of the number of exams and the other requirements in the exam process. So if you're you know, on the ILA track, for example, you still need to pass LPM, LFM, the two-hour LAM exam, or the four-hour ERM exam. And so that exam structure is not changing. However, the effective time length of the exam is increasing by 15 minutes. And don't get too excited about that yet because there is a catch, particularly with the five-hour exams. But I just want to be clear that the number of exams is the same and they're all essentially the same time length plus 15 minutes. Okay, so if you're looking at a five-hour exam, you're now going to have a total of five hours and 15 minutes to complete that exam at the Prometric Center. Of course, the catch is, in the past, the five-hour exams were broken into two distinct sessions. There was a three-hour morning session, and then you got a nice long lunch break, and then you came back and completed the afternoon session, which was two hours long. That lunch break is going away. It's gone. And the idea by increasing the exam length by 15 minutes, I believe, is to give you some extra padding in there in case you need to get up and take a break, which I think most people probably will want to at some point during a five-hour exam. That's a very long period of time to have to just continuously take a test, and it's probably a good idea somewhere in the middle of that to get up for a few minutes, stretch your legs, and then resume the exam. Now, with the two-hour exams, I think a lot of people probably won't need that break, and so they are getting maybe a little bit of an advantage compared to the past because their exam is longer. Once you hit that timer, it cannot be stopped. It will run continuously, but they are building in a little bit of extra time. Now, another key change is that in the past, you were always given a 15-minute read-through before the exam timer started. And that was 15 minutes both for the morning session and the afternoon session on a five-hour exam. It was also 15 minutes before the two-hour exam and 15 minutes before the four-hour ERM exam. There is no advanced read-through time anymore. That's gone. Now, in the Prometric environment that you'll be set up with at your workstation, you'll be able to you know, view the whole test, and there will be no restriction on going ahead to future questions or reading future questions, but you're not getting that advanced sneak peek, that read-through period, like you did in the past. So this is definitely a new ballgame. This is going to require sort of a new set of skills. It's certainly going to be something that you're going to want to practice before you sit down on exam day to be familiar with the whole process. And I highly recommend watching the video that the SOA put out in fall of 2020 that sort of goes over the general process of getting set up at your Prometric workstation. And I'll include a link to that video in the comments. And I'm also going to show a few screens that I took from that video to make a couple of points in just a moment. But first, just want to be clear, instead of you know getting a printed copy of the exam, you're basically going to have three files at your disposal 
uh, within the environment that you will have at Prometric on your screen, essentially at your workstation. So you'll get a PDF copy of the exam. As soon as you press start, you'll get a PDF copy. Uh, you'll also be able to download individually a Word file and an Excel file. Uh, the Word file is basically identical to the PDF copy of the exam. It'll contain all the questions, and it'll also contain answer boxes that I'll show you in just a moment where you can enter uh, your responses typically to verbal questions. And if a uh, question requires response in Excel, it will direct you to the Excel file. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And of course, the Excel file is where you'll probably be doing most of your calculation questions. Now, very important, and this will be made very clear to you, I think, when you go through the setup process at Prometric, uh, you have to individually submit the Word file and Excel file separately, manually, through their system before the timer runs out or before you, say, finish the test. So in the past, you know, the clock would run out and the proctor would say, okay, pen's down or pencil's down, and, you know, he or she would tell you to stop writing at that point. It's really up to you to really pay close attention to that clock and make sure you submit those files because from what I understand, once the timer runs out or if you were to click end test then and you have not submitted those files, they don't get turned in to the SOA. So you definitely want to budget a few minutes at the end to make sure that you have plenty of time to submit those. I think it's very simple, very trivial, but that is a new wrinkle to be aware of. So I mentioned that video that the SOA put out. And again, the link to that video will be in the comments below this video. But one of the key things to observe right away is the fact that once you click uh, start test or begin test, and that will be made very clear, you know, that button once you get through the setup process, uh, the exam will open in a PDF on your left. And this PDF will be sort of in a separate pane that'll have all the questions in, for the exam, just sort of in this static PDF that you can't alter, but you can view. Then you'll also have to, on your own, once the test starts, you do have to download the Word file and the Excel file individually through this interface here. And again, they'll explain all this to you, but just be aware you will have to download those. One point they did make in that video is that you will be able to arrange Windows side by side, which is really good news. You know, if you're working in Excel, but you maybe want to refer to the Word file, you want to refer to the PDF, you can minimize these windows, you can resize them, uh, you can, you know, line them up however you want. So that's really good news. And that's something to, you know, practice on your own as well before you take the exam. Just practice working at sort of a standard size screen and looking at the files like that. Now, on each exam page on the SOA's website, so if you're taking, let's say, LPM on the ILA track, go to the LPM page and you'll find sample questions that they've posted. Uh, there's not many there, but there's just a handful of sample CBT questions, and they do look fairly similar to the files that appear in the SOA's video. Uh, there are some subtle cosmetic differences with the Excel file. You'll notice uh, in the Excel file, it does seem that they are going to repeat the question in Excel. If you know it's a calculation question, they're gonna repeat uh, not only uh, the numbers that you might be using in the calculation, but also uh, the rest of the question for context. And in this particular screenshot, it looks like they would want you to put your answer here out to the right of this gray shaded region. This is a screenshot from one of the files on the ILA track, one of the samples that they posted. And you'll notice in this example, again, there is a gray area up here where they've included this sub question. So for this particular question, uh, only one part of the question required a calculation in Excel, uh, part C. And so they did include the verbiage from part C and also this table that was also in the Word file that was already included here. And in their example here, they've included uh, the solution below the gray box. But I think either way, I think it'll be really obvious where they want you to put your answer in Excel and I would just follow whatever format or whatever cues they leave you in the Excel file. So I think that'll be pretty straightforward. And you can certainly, you know, point your formulas up to, you know, the numbers that they include in the gray area too, just to save yourself some time. Now, one thing I want to point out, this is a really good example where, you know, it's important to understand that just because you have Excel, you don't necessarily just need to jump in and just start doing a bunch of number crunching. Just like in the past, it's very important to write out formulas, and you can see how they've done that here as an example. Uh, this is a new art form. It's kind of challenging. There's plenty of examples of actuarial formulas that are way easier to write on a piece of paper, especially when you're dealing with special actuarial notation and lots of subscripts and superscripts and Greek letters and things like that. Way easier to write that stuff by hand, but here you're working with essentially sort of a plain text environment you know, within these rows, and you just have to do your best 
to type out the formula, but you want to definitely type out a visible formula like this, sort of in text form, or describe the process, describe your steps, uh, do everything you can within reason and within the time limit to uh, show the grader that you understand the process and the intent of what you're supposed to do. Uh, don't just hope that you get the calculations right and expect them to dig through the formulas. I mean, certainly they're going to uh, dig through the formulas that they need to to try to audit your work, but you do need to explain your work. And in my experience, initially doing this myself, just for existing uh, exams, this is not as fast as I had hoped, okay? I'm a pretty fast typist, but um, I'm finding that I'm still spending a similar amount of time, okay, by the time I'm done. Uh, the calculation parts in Excel, of course, are pretty straightforward, especially when you can copy, paste, and fill, and update input cells and things like that. But, you know, taking the time to write out the formula, making sure that you're aiming your formulas at the right place, is still kind of time consuming, especially under exam conditions. And what I'm seeing in these initial sample solutions is that the volume of work required and just the volume of verbiage that I'm seeing in the samples is very similar to what we've seen in SOA model solutions for many, many, many years, okay? I've spent time looking at thousands of SOA model solutions in my career, and what I'm seeing in these samples is very similar to those, and that tells me that for now at least, uh, initially as these CBT exams roll out, it seems like the scope of the problems and the amount of response they're expecting is in line with written exams. And I think that makes sense because they probably don't want to necessarily favor people who are just really fast typists or have just really advanced Excel skills. So that's some good news. But this is definitely something that you'll want to practice. Here is another sample question that they provided for the ILA track. This is for the LFM exam. And you can see this is what the Word file will look like. Okay, the formatting in general is very similar to, way, to the way the exams have always been, where you have a question, it'll show you the total point value at the top. Uh, you'll see subparts typically, and they also put the point value on each subpart. And of course, uh, historically, the idea is to spend no more than three minutes per point. And so nothing has changed as far as I can tell in terms of how much time they expect you to spend because the total point value of the exams has not changed. The five-hour exams are still 100 points, for example. And so that usual strategy that we've talked about in the past, that should still hold in terms of budgeting your time. And the questions, as I said, that require verbal response will have uh, a box with the word answer in it, and you can just start typing. And from what it looks like to me, and the video that they showed is that this will probably be essentially a one cell table, which is good because uh, in Word, if you just have a table like this and you start typing, the more you type, the table will automatically expand for you as you type. Now one sort of annoyance that I've found uh, when typing into a box like this, it's a one cell table in Word, is that if you begin typing a bulleted list and you hit enter, and let's say you want a sub bullet here, if you press the tab key, it's gonna jump you out of the table. And so what you can do instead is just use the indent buttons, which are typically located on the home tab of the ribbon, and so I would just, you know, get familiar with those little things like that. Be sure that you're really comfortable typing into Word and that you understand how to use it in sort of those little idiosyncrasies that you may encounter on exam day when you're entering a response like this. Now, if a question or a part of a question requires a response in Excel, that will be clearly marked here. And then for these, for example, Part B, there would be a tab containing, most likely, uh, the verbiage for this part and hopefully also these numbers. But they did say in one of their communications that you will be able to select and copy-paste information from Word to Excel and vice versa if you need to. And so if, for example, uh, for whatever reason, they didn't include a table of numbers like this, then just come in here to Word, copy it, and paste it into the tab where you're doing your work in Excel, and you can refer to that information that way. But a question like this is a good example of how you could easily see a mixture of parts that require response in Excel and other parts that require a verbal response. So where can you go to find more information? Well, certainly pay close attention to your exams page on SOA.org. You're also hopefully familiar with the SOA's COVID-19 education page. You can find that from the homepage of SOA. There's also important information there that does change over time. And then, of course, on our course blogs and within our courses we are updating these weekly with new information new practice exams new video tips and things like that so if you have any questions feel free to drop those in the comments below 
we'll do our best to answer or point you in the right direction.